but at the same time, I think it has, like, I am so just... It's not in-depth knowledge. Yeah, I can't... Um, most articles I don't read, and I must look at probably, like, at least 50, 60 articles a day or more. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd be that up more. It's just ridiculous yeah. how much information we get each day. And see, so then I was thinking, well, it's going to be worse when you get recommendation engines where it's just, like, feeding you information. Yeah. <laughs> Quick bursts. Yeah, have some more, have some more. Like, okay, okay, just <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah. It's going to be like, uh, where it's going, I think that the content, especially what I found today, I was trying to get these um, pictures printed out by Kodak and um, I couldn't, act, their, their website was not very intuitive. Like, looked good, it was good design, but didn't really say where to click or do anything like that. That nice pictures. I guess it is a picture company. Anyway, um, what made me realize that I, I left the website after about a minute or two because I was just like, yeah. oh, I can't work out, I can't get what I need to get. And that made me realize that a lot of the time now, uh, we've spoken about it before, like the attention economy that websites need to prove to us, or content in more so, content needs to prove to us why we should consume it, why we should watch it. Whereas before, like, especially growing up, any movie, any TV show, I'd be like, oh yeah, let's watch that. Or my parents bring home a movie, oh my God, I need to watch that. Or a new magazine, yeah, let's read that, let's go through it. At the moment, no, the content needs to prove to me that yeah. I need to read it. And I know that's like, you know, stuck up like whatever thing there but it's true that's how I consume content because there is so much there that I have a choice that if you don't interest me I'll go to something else I really will we're even more so I think with um design yeah is even I think design is more important than content actually like yeah you go to a shitty looking website and you can tell it's a shitty looking website yeah. within seconds like and I'm just like not and it makes you think less of the actual content there yeah I don't care like yeah there are so many like that that there's so many awesome awesome blogs that i should be reading yeah i'm so like they yeah, use so the default content. wordpress thing and i'm just if they yeah. use the default wordpress thing i usually just don't ever read anything there or even like bad. even like cool ones like ones we should be reading for this podcast like kurtzwell ai yeah there's the shittest website ever like dude ray you have a, you have so much fucking money redesign this shit man like, it is... Look at that. That's, oh, that's... That's embarrassing. This is Kurzweil's main website. Ray yeah. fucking Kurzweil. And we'll see, that's it. It puts a, a negative spin. It's ugly as fuck. Like, I don't read it. Yeah. I barely... I only just... I visited this for the first time in, like, months. Yeah. And there's so many awesome singularity AI and technology. But it's just not... Content. Good. Does that mean that we're, like, a lot like the fashion industry, maybe? Maybe. We could be. That we're like, oh my god, you have to be under the... That? Like, it does give you the content. That's why this article is really like it's just hitting. Just it's just hitting the uh, the you know the icing of it all. I think it could actually be quite dangerous as to where we're going unless something's done about it. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, if we do, if the internet does end up turning us into you know stupefied a stupefied species where we're just like oh yeah, give us more information and we yeah. don't critically think about anything, then we're going to be far far more reliant on the technology than anything. Anything and. Yeah. I mean, we may as well not exist at that point. <laughs> Although I must admit, like, just reading through the headlines, just glancing at your computer, they... Actually, a cool one's popped up. It was about... Oh, wait, wait, go back down. There was one here, uh... No, it was back up. Anyway, it was about, um... AIs in virtual worlds. Here we go. AI meets the metaverse. Teachable AI agents living in virtual worlds. Okay. That's exactly what um, I've been thinking and we've yeah. been talking about for a while. Ah, oh, it's from 2007. Yeah, they got old content, still. too, but yeah. They're all 2007. Well, he does not blog this They are today. all 2007. Jesus Christ. Okay. So, yeah, you are cool, but damn, dude. <laughs> anyway. He's uh, old. He's popping pills trying to survive. <laughs> hey, fair enough. I mean, doing he's doing like 300 pills a day now. I'm going to run out my multivitamin. Got to get some more. <laughs> yeah. Buy me some multi. That must that. suck if you're that age, though, and you're just like, oh, man, I can see so it going close. this... I can see it going this way, and I can see this, you know, yeah. actually transcending and living forever, but I'm like 60, 70, and... <laughs> My lifespan is like... Yeah, not that long. 80? Like, oh, shit. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I hope you survive it. I hope you oh, survive you better. <laughs> I hope I survive it. Like, fuck. I'm scared of car crashes and shit. <laughs> anyway. And cancer. Yes. Uh, that, <laughs> a nice one to go on to from cancer is gallium. This is just a quick one. Uh, just more of a thought thing that just made me just sit back and go, wow. Um... There's this article that's on um, uh, Asimov's Science Fiction, or Asimov's.com. It's kind of interesting, never been to the site before, but it's uh, cool. It's about this article about how we're... It says we're running out of these resources, we're running out of these elements, so to speak, but what he means by running out is that uh, we're about to reach peak, we're about to let go supply, is uh, demands over supply because we've exhausted it all. Yeah. But just the very fact that we're at that point right now, that with so many of these things, like they've got gallium, they've got 
uh, they're saying zinc, they're even saying copper. One of these guys, this guy at the German University of Augsburg, is saying that by 2017, um, halfinium, I don't know, and in 20 years we'll see the extension of z extinction of zinc. Like when he says extinction, it just means like we're reaching a peak of all of that. But the very fact that us as a species right now is can actually mine out something from a yeah. planet that we are really starting to talk a lot now in planetary terms. And that's what I thought was cool. This is planetary terms. Well, that's why the race is on now to actually get off this fucking rock. Yeah, yeah that's it. We can, <laughs> well, this is the beginning of it. That I mean, like, supply, uh, demand exceeds supply. So then, yeah, people are going to be like, hey, where can we go? And then if people really want it that bad and we can't get it enough from junk heaps and all of that, a lot of the stuff apparently is in the back of LCD screens and stuff, what we use for our displays. Yeah. And so that's pretty important. They're like, oh, well, look, it's now economically viable to go out and get it from asteroids and stuff. I mean, that's a long way so away. Yeah, a long it way It won't away. be economically viable. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I guess the big thing would be recycling. Like you, yeah, well, that, that's what they're saying. Like here, it's still that. there. It's, it's yeah. in, in some kind of form. It's well, just you no talk way. about sustainable living and stuff, but yeah. We're, we're really now starting to operate on a planetary term, and that's what's really, yeah. I, I, I guess, just hit me, was kind of, oh my God. Like, we talk about nation states, we talk about all of that, but when you look at it, we are really just all one people all there. Yay, let's hold hands. Da, 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 da. But it's, yeah, it's we're, we're talking planetary terms. Yeah. This is the beginning of planetary terms. Sim, cool. Sim Earth is coming to an end. Hells yeah. <laughs> we have to finish up this game and <laughs> develop the technology to get to the next planet. Yeah, it's great. And it, it's resources, not like the, you know, global warming and all of that. So like, like, it's happening and it's hectic. But Well, I know you've been being into the whole peak oil stuff. Yeah, right? well, even that, it's like, holy crap, we nearly run out of oil. Oh. Yeah. Very soon. I mean, it is... I think a lot of people just don't care. They just no. Well, that's it. Or they rely it on. They rely on like I, I'm big on the whole just human ingenuity. Yeah. Like I think if it gets to the desperate point, you know, shit will happen and people. Will... Well, the only reason that I like, I think peak oil is very interesting is because it seems that most nation states are basing a lot of their stuff on it. That I mean, it does make me yeah. a little bit worried that I'm on the same side as Richard Cheney as Dick Cheney and something. Like I mean, not proud, not proud <laughs> of that. But um, yeah, he's one of Please the people. Please don't shoot me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's peak oil, but that's another thing. That's yeah. Research it yourself. It's good. Mm. Well, terrible. But anyway, we have we've ended very depressingly. We have. It's kind of you know. It's like the Earth's ending. Well, man. it's not the Earth's ending. <laughs> it's that we can't expand anymore. That now we're actually transforming the Earth into our habitat. That we've finally like we're in the petri dish. Yeah, it's, that's pretty much it. Full. We've realized the the size of the petri dish, and so now we're transforming the petri dish into awesomeness, crossed with cool. Well, not me. Grab the Earth and expand. Ah, it's gonna be great. But we've got nowhere else to go in the solar system, really. Nah. People say Mars. God, Mars is a barren and, like, planet. Voyager is what? Like, last time I looked it up, like 87,000 years away from actually reaching the next star. Yeah, there's current, nowhere else to go. At its current pace. We've got to be able to just... Yeah. I think it's gonna come down to this, again, singularity. We have to... We, we can't travel the universe in biological form, we no. have to be in some kind of... Well, even then, you've got light speed problems. I mean, if light speed is... If we can't actually go faster than light speed, if that is the true limit of the universe, then we are... But see, if you, if, you can, if you can achieve immortality through, like, some kind of... Well, yeah, true, then. Technology... It's just a I mean, technology is immor yeah. immortal. Like, yeah, that, well, that's voy true. that Voyager... Immortal. Like, he said Voyager off at that speed, it's going to last forever. Yeah, that's It'll true. get there eventually in 87,000 years. Yeah, true. It's, it's just going a new really, perspective on time. Yeah, it's going really, really slow. It's the same way that I'm sure a cell yeah. thinks that, oh my god, like, a year is a ridiculously unfathomable amount of time. Yeah, if it had... Well, if it could feel. Conscious. But it's the same way that, well, when you talk singularity, when you talk about, like, a whole planet is conscious, yeah. it's going to look at us as the same way. Probably. Some deep shit. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a pretty good yeah, way to this has it been, uh, episode 17 for Monday... Oh, fuck! No, it's... Okay, we record this on Monday. It was meant to be on a Sunday. Sunday, the May 30th. Or Monday, May 31st. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you later. I'm Christopher Grace. <laughs> I'm Nathan Waters. It's been High 45. Gotcha! Yes. <laughs>